Hi guys, this is the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron. In this video, I will show you some of the features and share my impressions with you. The car that we are looking at is the Audi Q4 Sportback 40 e-tron. It is the S-Line model with also lots of extra options and packs. Let's first look at the exterior. An S-Line model is standard equipped with a sports suspension, which lowers the body by 15 millimeters. This model also has specific S-Line bumpers. The radiator grille has an aluminum frame and aluminum inlay. The wheel arches and bumpers are in a contrasting color, Manhattan gray. The exterior color is Florey silver. There are eight colors available. Maybe this silver is not the most exciting choice. However, the car does look good in it. This car has the optional matrix LED headlights. The driver can switch between four different light signatures. I will show you a detailed demo of all the lights later in this video. I would for sure take this option. It's a unique feature that gives the car a very special touch. These are not the standard 20 inch rims of the S-Line model, but the optional 21 inch rims. They have the five spoke Evo rotor design. They have an aluminum look and parts of it are in matte titanium gray. Even though you will get less range with 21 inch rims, I would still opt for those because the car looks great with rims of this size. From this angle, you see the typical low coupe style roof line. It gives the car a very sporty yet elegant look. I also tested the regular Q4 e-tron and I prefer the look of the Sportback model. With this shape, the Sportback achieves a drag coefficient of 0.26, which is even better than the regular Q4 e-tron. This model has optional darkened side and rear windows. At the rear, the roof line ends in a spoiler that also divides the rear window into two parts. A light strip links the taillight units to each other. These are the optional LED taillights with dynamic indicators. As you should expect, the boot lid is operated electronically for opening and closing. Depending on the positioning of the rear seats, the volume of the luggage compartment is 535 liters to 1460 liters. There's also this handy compartment to store, for example, charging cables or to hide something valuable like a laptop if you have no other choice than to leave it in the car. You can lower the rear seats to create extra storage space. Even though from the outside it's not a huge SUV, the available space in the interior is comparable with the full-size SUV class. I've put the front seat in my normal driving position and there's plenty of leg room. There's also enough headspace. Because of its coupe design, the headspace feels a bit more compact, but there's for sure enough space. You cannot really see it in the images, but there is kind of a notch in the roof that creates extra headroom. Because it's an electric car, there's no center tunnel. This results in an overall feeling of spaciousness in the interior. This car is fitted with the interior pack S-Line with fine Nappa leather in black. The roof headliner is also in black fabric. Thanks to the panoramic roof, you have lots of light in the interior of the car, so it doesn't look too dark. In the front, you have leather sport seats. They can be adjusted electronically in many different ways. On top of that, as you probably expected, they are also heated. Even though they are sport seats, they are comfortable even after long drives. The dashboard has an interesting shape with lots of cool looking panels. The dashboard on the passenger side looks huge. It's almost like a table, however not practically usable because of the windshield. From the driver's point of view, it looks like you're sitting in an ultra-modern spaceship. You have the virtual cockpit in front of you, the central MMI touch display on your right, and a bit lower there's a center console which seems to be floating in the air. This has the start-stop button and the driving switch. The steering wheel also has buttons that can be operated by touch. Infotainment and navigation are operated primarily using the central MMI touch display. Overall, I like the look of this car. There's not much to complain about in the looks department. Before we talk about how it drives, let me show you one thing that does not look very good. What is this? They should have hidden this part under a nice looking cover or turned it into a storage space.
This is the 40 e-tron model. It is rear wheel drive. The electric motor generates 204 horsepower and 310 newton meters of maximum torque. It goes from 0 to 120 kilometers per hour in 8.5 seconds and the top speed is 160 kilometers per hour. On paper it's not super fast, however it's an electric car so power is immediately available. Is 204 horsepower enough or does it feel underpowered? To me it's not underpowered and it is enough. It feels nice to drive, however I would not characterize it as having a sporty side, not even in dynamic mode. If you find this very important, you are better off selecting a 50 e-tron Quattro. However, if you really, really want sporty, the Tesla Model Y offers better performance, but with 63,000 euros, it's a lot more expensive. Steering is precise and the traction while cornering is very good, also thanks to the sport suspension. Even on a wet road with rear-wheel drive, the, this car has good traction. So, sport suspension and 21-inch wheels, is it uncomfortable to drive, you might wonder? Driving on a bumpy road is actually comfortable enough. Of course, it doesn't drive like a magic carpet. However, it does filter out a lot of unwanted movement. Only on the worst parts of the bumpy road, the suspension feels too stiff. In the Dynamic Package Plus, there is suspension with damper control available. The battery is located beneath the passenger compartment at the lowest point of the car. The distribution of weight is because of that close to 50-50. For me, this type of weight distribution offers more driving pleasure than, for example, just adding more horsepower to this car. Speaking of battery, let's have a closer look at that. This is the 40 e-tron model. It has a battery with a gross capacity of 82 kilowatt hours and a net capacity of 76.6 kilowatt hours. According to Audi, this model has a WLTP range of 534 kilometer. If you want to know more about the range in real life driving conditions, I made a range test video where I test the range on the highway at higher average speeds and another test where I test the range at lower average speeds so that I could determine the minimum and maximum range. I'll put a link to that video in the description. This battery has 12 modules and weighs about 500 kilograms. The battery operates at a rated voltage of 352 volts. A strong surrounding frame protects the battery system in an accident. What about charging? The Audi Q4 Sportback 40 e-tron is equipped with CCS combined charging system. This system enables the Q4 Sportback e-tron to be charged with both AC and DC charging. The charging speed is up to 11 kilowatt for AC charging and up to 125 kilowatt for fast DC charging. In ideal conditions, the Q440 e-tron can recharge enough electricity to cover about 130 kilometers in around 10 minutes. It takes around 38 minutes to charge the battery from 5% to 80% using DC charging. I also did a charging test at a public charger in my range test video. I want to find out how long it takes in real life to charge the battery. One of the cooler features of this car is the optional augmented reality head-up display. It displays some information from the assist systems as well as turning arrows of the navigation system. Audi refers to it as the drone flies ahead, showing you the way. The drone is a floating arrow and it shows you the next point of action on the route. It does look cool, sometimes it's very helpful, on the other hand sometimes it can be a bit confusing because to me it was not always clear where I needed to turn. This car has many standard and optional driver assistance systems. One that I would consider taking is adaptive cruise control where the car controls the distance to the vehicle ahead by accelerating and braking. Adaptive cruise assist system enhances adaptive cruise control by performing light steering to keep the car in the center of the lane. Of course, you still need to hold the steering wheel, however, it does help a lot. The side assist 
monitors traffic behind and beside the car and warns you if you are about to change lanes in a dangerous situation. This car is equipped with optional matrix LED headlights and LED taillights with dynamic front and rear indicators. Using the MMI touch operating system, the driver can switch between four digital light signatures at any time. At the rear, we see the taillight signature with a continuous light strip. Let's look at some information about the prices. The base model is an Attraction 35 e-tron and it starts at 46,400 euro. This is the 40 Q4 e-tron which starts at 52,440 euro for the Attraction model. And then for 2000 extra you get the S-Line model. The car as tested costs 74,439 euro but it has a lot of packs such as Pack Platinum, Pack Interior S-Line, Pack Navigation Plus, Pack Comfort Pro, etc. The top model is a S-Line 50 e-tron Quattro and it costs 60,560 euro. In conclusion, for the positives I would say it looks great both interior and exterior. The materials used in the interior are of superior quality. For range and charging it is perfectly usable in everyday life. It has lots of driving assistance systems and I like how it drives thanks to the 50-50 weight distribution. For the negatives I would say the price especially when you start specking it out. It's not a negative point only for this car. I find in general electric cars are not very affordable. Rear view camera is okay but nothing special. Maybe a top view is missing and they, they could have done more with the space underneath the front trunk. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions ask them in the comments. Be sure to subscribe if you want to be notified about future videos.